Hello and welcome back to my channel, Discovering Dez. My name is Dez and I'm back at you with another video. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and like this video so you can be one of the first people to know uh, whenever I upload a video. If you're a returning viewer, go ahead and like this video and share it with your friends, do whatever, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that, make it happen. For those of you who don't know, I am going into my second year of teaching. Uh, we have just finished our first full week of school and it feels really good to be back. Uh, I'm feeling a lot more confident in myself and a lot more uh, at home in my abilities, more secure in what I'm doing and uh, just in general more in the know, I guess. And honestly, the difference in going back to school, it was, it was a pretty big difference for me. Like I just feel a lot less anxious about going to work, about my abilities there, about my interactions uh, with students, about my interactions with my colleagues, administration, uh, and even parents. I just feel a lot more secure within myself. So with that same thought in mind, I had the idea to come to you guys and just go over the five uh, top things that I learned my first year of teaching. So number five, number five, number five is very important. And before I say this, uh, I'm going to just, maybe I won't. Should I? Shan't I? Shall I? I will. Hey. <laughs> It's not like I have personal problems that associate with this. I just know it can be a sticky situation for some people. I'm just gonna say it. Okay, number five, number five, work friends. Work friends are great. With work friends, you must also set boundaries. Like you can be cool, y'all can talk, y'all can <laughs> get to know each other, but gotta set boundaries, some things aren't for the workplace. Some things shouldn't be discussed at the workplace. Uh, Keep it professional, that's that's all I ask personally. Just don't do too much. Moving on, uh, number four, number four, four? Number four is something that I have struggled with forever. You can ask my mom, you can ask my grandma, and you can ask just about anybody. I would say organization is key. Uh, that was definitely one of the biggest things I struggled with my first year. Uh, as a special education teacher, I have a lot of paperwork from meetings, a lot of time logs, a lot of a lot of stuff that I am accountable for. So I just had to figure out what really worked for me. And so far this year, I think I have it figured out. Uh, we're gonna see, I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to keep myself all together. I'm trying to make sure I'm putting things away when they need to be put away. Uh, keeping my calendar more updated, uh, keeping multiple calendars. That's something I'm trying to consistently do this year, use an actual planner, uh, my phone. I'm doing so many rotations at school. Now I have to have certain alarms set throughout the day because my schedule doesn't match up with the bell schedule. So it's just, I'm doing the best I can and I'm doing really good right now. So y'all just keep me, just, just keep me in your prayers, thank you. Uh, number three. Number three has always been something that I felt very strongly about, even in high school, it's just something that I always stood by. You greet the custodian with the same energy that you greet the superintendent, uh, your boss, a parent, anybody that comes in. You give everybody that you work with the same respect. And those people can honestly make your life great or they can make your life hell. And it's just like, which one do you, which one do you want? Because I, respect people, please. Like, just do it. Number two, number two is my favorite. Even though it's not number one, number two is my favorite. Uh, there's, there's no reward for uh, the person who stays the most hours after school. You have a salary, that's it. You don't get any more. <laughs> What's on that contract, that's what you get. You may get a little surprise bonus, but that's if you're lucky. Get your work done, but don't spend countless hours trying to do it. Be efficient, figure out what works for you, figure out what's gonna save you the most time, the most energy, what's best for your kids. Figure out 
what you need to do. And that goes for any job. That that kind of goes back to my vi my last video about setting boundaries. Like you gotta know, hey, I'm spending too much time focusing on work. I'm slacking off at home. This isn't being done. That isn't being done. You gotta make sure that home is taken care of first, cause work is gonna be there when work's gonna be there. That's that's just how I feel. Your things are turned in on time. Things are happening that need to be happening. There's no reason for you to be staying at school till 5, 30, 6 o'clock every night trying to prep. There's no reason for that. And like, I, I, I get the dedication. I appreciate it, but teaching is still a job. And there's still a line and I still have a life. Um, and number one goes for just about any industry. Well, I would say most of these apply to just about any industry that most people work in. But trust the process. Like everything isn't gonna be perfect from day one. It's not, it most likely isn't gonna be perfect ever. You're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad days. But just from my side, uh, being a teacher, uh, a lot of the things you deal with are behavior problems. Uh, and students, uh, then you have a lot of things you gotta keep up with as far as coaching cycles, collaboration, all of that. And it can be a lot trying to keep up with turning things in, observations, people coming in and out. You're just, you get frustrated because you're being pulled in so many directions. You got so many things to get done. You feel like you just don't have enough time. And that goes back to my previous step about just setting boundaries, not spending too much time at work, all of that. All those things are necessary evils, unfortunately, even though I thought that's kind of problematic, but it's just a lot that goes on as a teacher and you just have to deal with it. And once you get to the other side of, that, of those things where you're more seasoned and you have reaped the benefits, even though our benefits are <laughs> I mean, you've gained the experience of going through all of those things, so you've gained skills to be able to reach more children, be a better teacher, and all those great things. And the key to su surviving all that would be, for my opinion, flexibility. Like, you gotta realize everything isn't gonna go your way. The timelines aren't always gonna line up. The expectations aren't always gonna be met and you just gotta, you gotta know how to work with that. And one of the main things about being a teacher is you monitor and adjust. You progress monitor, you see what's working, you see what's not working, and you make a change. Like that's something that I've had to adopt like in my own life. Like what's working for me? What makes me feel the best? What makes me feel productive? And if it isn't contributing to any of that, it gets a big X. Like, you gotta go, it's done. Like, change instruction. We gotta do something different. All right, so let me know what you think of those top five things that I learned my first year of teaching. Uh, if you're a teacher, what's some interesting things that you learned your first year? Uh, what's some things you learned if you're an older teacher or some things you learned five, 10 years down the year? Share, drop some things, let me know. And if you are a professional in any other industry, let me know what you learned uh, your first few years out in corporate America, because I know uh, those situations can uh, be even more interesting. Just not even working with children, just working with adults and more business-minded people. Yeah. Like I said earlier, it is Sunday, so I'm going to go get ready for the week, get my life together, get my room together. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with somebody. Hope you enjoyed it.